still here. So today we are taking out the, well, this is a Swift. I do not have a lot of time. Uh, I got a lot of silly stuff happening at the house. A bunch of stuff broke down and um, in the process of getting it fixed. Um, what does that mean? Well, I needed a fast plane to do a fast battle. So I said take out the Swift. Uh, I may wash the uh, other British skua taste out of my mouth. Uh, and we'll see how this goes. I really actually didn't like this plane when I first got it. Uh, but that's because I tried to play it like it was an attacker or like a Spitfire, and that's just not what it is. This plane is actually built, purpose built to take on speedier planes. It's got pretty good maneuverability. Okay, once you built it up, um, it, but it has excellent airspeed. It's got just okay altitude performance. Um, what it comes down to though is this plane really should be taking on heavy fighters. It should be taking on multi-role fighters. It should be taking on the less maneuverable, and what I mean by that, like the MiG uh, tier 10 fighters. It's not meant to be dogfighting. Dogfighting is going to get you into trouble in this plane because uh, not necessarily because of the maneuverability. The maneuverability is okay enough to dogfight. It's the guns, actually. As strong as these cannons are, two 30 millimeter cannons, they've got some punch to them. There is only two of them, and so what that means is when you're going against something like an F-86 here, look like I've only got to get a little bit of damage on it. When you're going against something like that, you miss a lot of shots. And so you've got to be able to deal with the repercussions of missed shots. I mean, this plane doesn't always do that well when dealing with the repercussions of missed shots. Let's go ahead and use our speed here. Let's see just how much more damage I can do to something that's not as maneuverable. Let's watch out for these heavy fighters. Let's see if I can't knock this guy out. Go. Let's see if we can have go for these heavy. Well, can I get the regular fighter? Let's try. Speaking of Spitfires, right? There we go. Thank you for going in just straight enough line for just long enough. Wow, heavy fighters. And you see what I mean by the dog fighting part of it? Not quite the turn ability. It's actually good for this guy. Cool. Got the sucker anyway. All right, so let's move along. To, uh, I'm gonna try to go through the center first, see if I can get some HP back. Get it revealed sent there, and then I'll probably have to go back to our command center that's gonna be flipped by the EF-131. This is tier 10. So I'm gonna deal with that. Let's see if I can't uh, get some wrench. Wrench me up anytime now. Give me some heals, man. No, no heals. All right, cool. Didn't want to get healed anyway. Didn't come all the way across the map to get healed anyway. Going too fast. I'm going too fast. Said no one. I'm going to defend this sector a little bit, maybe. Maybe if I can hit my shots. Oh, my goodness the frustrating part of this particular plane is its cannons. If you're not hitting with the cannons, everything's just super frustrating. Of course, I hit that guy. Couldn't hit freaking F-84, though. There we go. Three in quick succession. Now, can I get some wrench? Probably not. Got this 1092. I can outmaneuver 1092. Can certainly outspeed it. Hello? Can I hit it though? Yes, we can. Let's go ahead and go after this 228 really quick. Oh, actually, shoot. 
mistakes were made. But if I paid enough attention quickly enough to not go flying past him, that would have been a lot of trouble being uh, in a dogfight with an F-86. It's just one of those planes. Because you can't really get away from an F-86 by speeding, because F-86 is just as fast as us. Has better altitude and better maneuverability than us. It's like F-86 is an anti-swift. Um, might have a little bit better speed than him, but I mean, not enough to make me comfortable. Depending on his build. Trying to get bomb dropped here. I was gonna say both these planes should be on super low health. We have complete there we go. The Got ourselves Nakamatsu go. against an EF-131. So I mean, I'll take that. Um, game's not over because again, we're against an EF-131. Um, still going against the F-86, am I? That was a fast battle, wasn't it? Uh, and that's how I like to play the plane, is be an opportunist, right? Do not get in dogfights, but don't be afraid to hit and run. Um, just be mindful of what you're going against. Uh, like I said, the F-86 is going to be the biggest threat to me. Heavy fighters, a lot of those multi-role fighters, ground attackers, not a big deal. Um, EF-131, I'm not going to waste my time sitting behind an EF-131. Let's head back. All right, so a quick battle, but uh, that's what I needed. Thank you, Swift, for doing exactly what I needed. 14 kills there, 8,200 aerial damage. So, I mean, decent, but nothing over the top. Apparently, I even did some ground damage, apparently. Uh, 420 capture points, nice. And not quite the 14,000 personal points, but, you know, maybe next time. Uh, I'd like to take full credit for that, but I suspect that we were just able to take advantage of the different sectors, uh, what was available, and attack the smart things to attack. Going for that garrison, I know I always joke around on my live streams, the garrisons win games, but in this instance, the garrison was the smart move. Uh, it's something that we could easily capture ourselves, and any capturing at any point is a good thing when you're going against a, an extreme bomber, EF-131, SU-10, whatever it might be. And just owning sectors is going to, to certainly help. It helps twofold, right? Uh, first part, obviously, you're capturing uh, capturing a sector is going to get you more capture points. But it also has a snowball effect. If we've got four sectors and they've only got one sector, our entire team is going to be attacking, or for the most part, going to be attacking that one sector. So you're putting a lot of pressure on that one sector. And we're going to flip it sooner. Whereas they've got to capture at least at least two sectors to, to take the pressure off of them. And even a 131 is not going to be able to capture two sectors like instantaneously. So by going to that garrison, it actually started the process for us to be able to get that air supremacy. And for us to be able to win that battle. Doesn't happen all the time, obviously. But it would have been pointless for me to try to you know defeat the AF-131. Uh, my goal was to try to outcap it go to where my plane was going to be most valuable so let's take a quick quick look at the plane itself i, I know i've posted quite a few videos on it but i just wanted to um show kind of what why i play this plane the way i do and if i wanted a different play style which other planes i would play so the swift com we're going to compare it to the mig 15 and the 1101 and the reason being is because we'll, we'll see some similarities here the swift is incredibly incredibly fast um You've got the same maneuverability and altitude performance as the 1101 here. It's a very popular tier 10 uh, German heavy, uh, fighter. This plane has four 20 millimeter cannons that do some excellent consistent damage. Arguably, even though the, the gun armament number is, is pretty similar, these guns are going to be significantly better in practice than the two 30 millimeter cannons on the Swift. This These guns are just better all around against every everything. They, they do more consistent damage versus fighters. As you saw in the Swift, sometimes when you've only got two guns, 
that little tiny uh, key 162 or F86 will go like right between the cannons and get you just frustrated. It can be the downfall of the Swift when you're in a dogfight if you're against something that dodges the shots. Obviously, you need to hit your shots to do any kind of critics, crit, critical damage or any kind of damage in general. And so that can be frustrating on this plane. The Swift is really built for taking on heavy fighters, most multi-role fighters, and even planes like the MiG-15 and to a lesser extent the 1101. Um, where you want to avoid is like fighting the really turny fighters uh, when you're going in, in the Swift. So that's the 1101. The MiG-15 comparing to the Swift, the MiG-15 is going to have the altitude performance. Its actual overall speed is not quite as fast as the Swift. In my head, I thought the MiG-15 was faster. I suppose on base it probably it probably is faster, and I just don't have my pilot fully um, built in. Uh, but right now, my, my MiG-15 and my Swift are about the same airspeed. Significantly improved altitude performance with the MiG-15. Um, slightly worse maneuverability. Noticeably worse, but, but still slightly worse. Um, you've got a 37mm cannon and two 23s, so you've got one cannon that is all over the place, and then two consistent cannons in the 23s. This plane here is going to be more of a flying up at high altitude and diving in on, on something like a Swift. That's how you're going to take advantage of a Swift. If you're trying to dogfight a MiG-15 and a Swift, a, just straight turn fighting, the Swift is going to eventually win. Um, but the MiG-15s leverage that altitude. Uh, MiG-15 is great for taking out heavy fighters as well. Uh, and so you know, that's the nuanced difference between those two particular planes. Then there's the F-86, which is a little bit of everything. Uh, this is a complete... Th this plane's built for taking out fighters. Where the Swift is, is built, and the MiG, for that matter, is built for taking out like heavy fighters more than, than fighters. Uh, the F-86 is built for taking out Swifts and MiG-15s and 1101s and all that jazz, right? Um, specifically, I have my altitude performance is the same as a MiG. The maneuverability is significantly better than all three of those planes that we just talked about. In fact, it's on par with a Ki-162. It's not quite to a Yak-30 level, but it is a very, very... This is a very, very turn fighter, especially for something that's got the altitude performance of a MiG-15. And its airspeed, while not quite MiG-15, while not quite swift speed, um, it's not far off. A swift will not be able to get away from a F-86 quickly, um, especially if the F-86 is paying attention. So the F-86 is really an anti-altitude fighter fighter. Uh... Its guns are weak, although they did get the buff. It's just the machine gun, so it's not going to be able to take down heavy fighters quickly, although it can take down heavy fighters. It's definitely not going to be able to take down ground attackers and bombers at all really very quickly, unless you're just uh, you know able to find them on, on lower health. So the F-86 kind of leverages that by taking out the other fighters. Um, so the key to flying the Swift properly, though, is, is putting it in its wheelhouse. Don't go dogfighting in, in low-altitude circles with a Yak-30 or an F-86 or a Ki-162. You're going to struggle. You might have some good games, but you're going to struggle in general. The Swift is really going to do best um, attacking MiG-15s, attacking all the heavy fighters, attacking most of the multi-role fighters. Be wary of Jawas and, and BVP-212s. Uh, 215s aren't really a big deal, but 212s. Anything that can outturn you, uh, typically, you just want to hit them and keep running. Use your excessive airspeed. Um, learn lessons that I didn't learn when I first got this plane. And focus on getting the cannons to hit. Don't think of yourself as a fighter. Think of yourself as an anti-heavy fighter. Um, turn when you, when you can, but don't rely on your maneuverability. Even though I've got pretty good maneuverability, it's not... Uh, it's not the wheelhouse of this particular plane. The wheelhouse is excellent cannons and excellent speed. Take advantage of those, and you will succeed with the Swift. I hope that was helpful. I've got to wrap this up. Um, I've, I've got to go find out what's going on with stuff. So uh, hope you have a great day. Sorry for the quick video, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.